there. Now, when we talk about broadcasting coverage and we talk about uh, one particular situation, you know, not everybody gets it right all the time. No. no. Tom Rinaldi has told phenomenal stories for a long time. We're all big fans of Tom Rinaldi. Tom Rinaldi is very nice to us. Tom Rinaldi has obviously uh, done things and created things in the past that has made us think and laugh and cry. What? Everything. The whole gamut of emotions. Tom Rinaldi is a talent. He had a pretty hilarious line during his last game mm -hmm. about Matt LaFleur, delivered in a Tom Rinaldi fashion. You know, guys, Matt LaFleur tells me that anytime Andrews Carlson goes out there to kick, he just closes his eyes and he prays. Mm. Back to you guys. Now, <laughs> the way I was taken, yeah. especially with the way that game ended, mm, with yeah. Durs missing, was obviously its whole thing. Matt LaFleur, in a press conference, chose to address it. Here's him talking about the situation. You apparently told him that you pray before every kick you guys have. That was extremely disappointing uh, <laughs> that that's how that message got uh, portrayed. Um, you know, I've been doing this for, been a part of production meetings for ever since I became a coordinator. And I've never had a, an experience like that. But it is what it is. I talked to Honors about it. And, Anders, sorry. You know, I think anytime There's, yeah. something's out of your control, you, you know, kind of saying it in jest and having fun with it. But <laughs> it got portrayed that way. And, you know, it, it's a learning lesson for me. Yeah, I prayed before Crosby, too. They didn't say that. Yeah, yeah. What the I was hell? just talking about it all. It is all in the delivery of the information in those production meetings. I was never a part of them. Were you? And after talking to a lot of players and coaches, they got to give enough information so that the commentators can tell the story of the team that they would like. Like, hey, the reason why we're attacking this is because of this. You know, it is a dance in those production meetings between players and coaches and the coverage. But then there's sometimes where people will feel like they got got by the commentary team or by the broadcast team. Numerous players have had to come out and say, I never said that. That is not real. That is not how I meant it, if that's the case. Because that one little line from Tom Rinaldi can shape an entire narrative about a guy who's already had a rough season. Yep. And the fans are like, all right, LaFleur feels the same way. Mm -hmm. We do. It's a big deal, those things. There's a lot of trust involved in that whole game. Oh, yeah. And I think we uh, you know, pretty much guaranteed that Matt LaFleur will not be giving any information nope. in future production. Forever. That's what we know, for sure. Yeah, he's he's going to mention it. He's going to reference it multiple times. Well, uh, he's going to start talking. He's going to well, now I've been burned in the past. Yeah, I'm just going to keep my mouth shut. Like, he's probably not going to give a whole lot of info because I can see why Rinaldi said it, but just in the timing and everything, how it worked out, yeah, it was a – it's something that LaFleur would probably say. Hey, I would say this for any kicker on the staff. Like, it has had nothing to do with him. It's just kicking in general is a scary thing for everybody. Yeah. Have you ever been in Lambeau? There's like 30 mile an hour gusts at all times. Mm -hmm. So, anytime okay. we're going out to kick mm -hmm. extra point or field goal, I just close my eyes and pray. And then LaFleur just walks out of that meeting. And then Tom Renault is like, wait, you remember. Jesus. He just. He did. Pretty big point of the game. A lot happening. And then all of a sudden, Durs is just getting crushed. Uh, I mean, you Packers fans have not been the biggest fan. He's following a legend in Mason Crosby. Mm, for sure. And he hasn't made, you know, kicks. He that. missed like 14 kicks this year. 10 kicks. You know, if you're Chad Ryland and you're doing it and your team goes 4-13, and 13, no one gives a shit. Hey, we're getting the third pick. That's awesome. Oh. When you should beat the number one seed in the playoffs on the road and you miss a 41-yarder and you've been doing it all season, like, yeah. People are going to be pissed off. Why did they bring back Mason ever? I have no idea. I, I said that kind of in jest, and I, I didn't think they'd actually do it because we mentioned it. Like, that was kind of the the team before Goody and all that kind of stuff. So who knows how that ended and if there was any bad blood there. I, I don't know. But then he signed with the the Rams that one week when, when we were out in New York right before we saw him, and he, he went with the Rams. And, yeah, and then he went to the Giants right after that. And I don't think – he wasn't great with the Giants. I think he missed a couple kicks, so I don't oh, know no. if that had something to do with it. Mason. But, but also we talk about I'm it all saying. the time. Like, there's not just a, there's not just like a group of guys who you can at this point in the season be like, oh, this guy, like we'll bring him in, he'll be unbelievable. Like that's why you need to have a guy because there isn't just a big scrap heap of kickers who you can replace your guy with and who are going to be automatic and who are going to be great. It just doesn't work out like that. We obviously talk about kicking and putting a little bit more than anybody else because. Obviously, mm -hmm. but like at this stage, it matters. Oh uh, yeah, big time. It absolutely matters. Like Badgley kicking right now, the way he is for the Lions, is oh, a yeah. big deal. Mm -hmm. Now the last extra point turned sideways. Right. Now I don't know if that was him or the hold or if it got batted, but he's been a, he's the only Moody 
young guy mm -hmm. doing great for San Francisco, even though in preseason it was like, mm -hmm. is this guy going to be able to make a yeah. kick? The and then he just clocks in whenever the game starts yep. to matter. And on the other side, Bucker and Tucker. Yeah, don't have to worry about them. It's no. like whenever it matters, it matters. You know, Bucker's one of the only humans to have a game winner in the Super Bowl. It's like, and Tucker is – the greatest of all time at kicking a football. It is no questions. You don't want to have question marks at that particular position this late in the season. No, you don't. And that's a part of it. it and you do close your eyes and pray. Yeah. For a lot of them. And no matter who's kicking it. It'd be Vinny, it'd be Tucker, like, what? you know, shit. You see, you see this one literally for game winners <laughs> on a regular basis. People on the sideline, on a knee, arm in arm, head down, not even watching. What do you think they're saying? Please, God, or gods. Let this ball travel through two sticks, and my life will be so much better. It's absurd. And if you miss the ball by that much, an entire city, an entire organization, an entire program yep. is gone. It's a never let your kids be kickers. Which is ever. Which is what Carlson did. Like that 41 yard or what it's not like he missed it terribly. Like he just missed it by a little bit. And it's not completely absolving Jordan Love, but after the game, I was oh. saying, like, you know, yeah, he he throws that interception on first down, and you'd love him to to live to see another play there and kind of move down the field. But I personally, I think he's thinking, like, we got to go down and score here. Like, we just saw what happened. Like, so field position, like, do, it's not like, hey, let's just get into field goal range and we'll let our rookie kicker send this into overtime. It's like, we just saw what happened. Yeah, I shouldn't have thrown that pick on first down, but it's like, I got to make a play. We got to go score a touchdown. Here. Tyler Bass has deleted all his social media accounts. Oh, smart no. man. That's smart. From yeah. what I heard Didn't from Didn't they game do something, though? What's weren't up? they like doing some? Weren't they raising money for him or something for his charity? Somebody was. Bills Mafia probably makes the most of any situation. I, I don't think it's everybody. Yeah, Chief, not not Chief the fans, ones I talking think to Gabe Davis. Oh, well, they have a, they have a long history of the wide right situation. That's what long, I think it gave everybody. Long. Oh no, they thought of that. Dude, I the, that kicking is, sucks. I kicking would be sucks, awful. Dude. Why would you? I would not I want to. Thought kick he it. made it. Literally, only business decision for me and the family is high school. Like, hey, if you kick this football good, you're gonna get paid a lot of money. So we should do that? Yeah. Do you want to run seven miles and kick a ball? Or do you want to take three steps and kick a ball and get paid more money in America? Yeah. Or as opposed to Europe? It's like, I like to be a kicker. And I don't think I fully thought it through. You know, like whenever I was. Now, why would you? Why would you at that age? Like, when I was like, I'm going to be thinking kicking. through. My mom, though, <laughs> every game, worst nightmare. Every time. Oh, oh my God. I would be, I'd be sitting there in the stands like, all right, please be, we got to be up by seven or 10. Please don't make this a three point game. And if we, it comes down to my son trying to drain a kick. We're going to – we're watching at Lucas Oil Stadium, and we'll watch a kicker come out, and it's like a 35-yarder, and I'm like, oh, my God. So nervous. Yeah. yeah. Like, so – because so many things could go wrong that nobody mm -hmm. thinks about. Like, a kicker uh, – kick earlier in that game, Holder Whelan. Yeah. New long snapper, new holder. He had his palm on the ball, mm -hmm. and Carlson just makes it. Nobody talks about that. Right. No. Nobody talks about how that was supposed to be a miss. It was a make. And then if you just literally miss it by this much, it's over. That's why what Justin Tucker does, every time you see that thing just straight as an arrow, yep. perfect end over end, it's like, that son of a bitch might be a robot. Like, yeah. might actually be a robot. 30-mile-an-hour gust and winds. Well, if you hit the ball perfectly end over end, like, the wind ain't going to do nothing. Harrison Bucker, this past week, hit a 47-yarder into a 30-mile-an-hour wind, I think. And they were saying it was, like, a 10-yard difference. And as the 47 was traveling, he was still looking. Oh, yeah. Does it have enough? His teammates were like, yeah, it's only 47-yarder. And Bucker's like, I don't know if that's the case. <laughs> yeah. And he sneaks it in. The camera didn't even have the it. The camera messed up on that, yeah. The camera didn't even have it. It was, it was so short. It's like, Bucker... Tucker in the AFC side locks. Jake Moody is proven in big games to make kicks. Badgley has as well. Hopefully, this will be a weekend where no kickers get murdered yeah. because this past weekend there was a lot mm -hmm. of kill the kicker talk. Wow. Anytime Skip Bayless goes to his phone and says, you, 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 kick. It's like, all right, not great. Obviously, not good for the brand. But this weekend, big bounce back weekend for the kickers. Yeah, absolutely. Doesn't do anything for you. No, but and, and you also, I mean, it's like, it's not like he's, you think. You think he feels worse about it than I do? I'm sure he does. You yeah. know, it's like it's not like he's going out there trying yeah. to miss. Like he's going to think about that the rest of his life. So it's like you, you under. I mean, it sucks. It just it is what it is. You